Hey everybody, we're talking finding your best hip position for the squat and why the way most people do it is not the best way to do it. Hips and, yeah, let me start over. Okay. I need some, I need some coffee. It's okay. <laughs> let me try one. You wanna try an intro? Oh, really? <laughs> Maybe. You wanna try it? Hold okay. on. You got it. Um, okay. Okay. Ready? Ready. Hey everyone, Brandon and Cassandra here in our new filming studio at the new location for Kabuki Strength. Today we are talking about finding your pelvic positioning when squatting. Uh, oftentimes people tend to squeeze their glutes and get crunched right underneath the squat bar and then they immediately lose position. So today we're just going to demonstrate that and uh, give you a few drills to try to find the best pelvic and rib cage position for you. Perfect. Cassie, let's show them what it looks like. Now, if you guys have been on social media, well, you're watching this on social media, maybe you're someone who does this, it's very common to see somebody set up and they are kind of loose as they're walking back, they kind of find their position, and then they squeeze their glutes as hard as they can and go into almost a posterior pelvic tilt or that tucking under. They almost really overdo it. There's nothing wrong with having better glute activation at various segments of the squat, but in the initial start position, the best way to set your pelvis is not by flexing your glutes, because as soon as you initiate the squat, you immediately lose it and your spine's gonna do whatever it has to to find a stable point of leverage. And that's really the key here. So the best way to find your most stable glute and uh, actually pelvis position is through better breathing and bracing. Many, many muscles connect rib cage to pelvis to lower back. And those are the muscles that are the most responsible for controlling this torso position because we're, we're only as concerned about the hip position as much as we are the lower back's position. And that lumbo-pelvic rhythm is super important, but it doesn't happen by just squeezing the glutes. It happens by maintaining your bracing very, very well. This cylinder, this rib cage over pelvis type position, because as soon as you squat, you're going to have to maintain that position. And if your only strategy for maintaining that position was squeezing your hips under the bar, you will go into really tight concentric activation, but then as soon as you go to hinge, your glutes immediately start to lengthen and it becomes an eccentric load on that muscle. Because of that, you are no longer going to be in control of that pelvis position. Cassie showed it really well there. And the thing that I wanna highlight about that position is the change at the lower back. If you set your pelvis into position by jamming hips forward and tucking the tailbone under you, you might feel like you're stacked and tight, but as soon as you go to squat, lower back deforms, changes position, because it has to. It has to find tension in order for you to maintain the bar position on your upper back. So instead of focusing on hip circles and things of that nature to fix this specific fault, we're actually gonna take it back and focus on our foundational breathing and bracing mechanics. Cassie, go and rack it here. There are many ways to improve this problem. One of our favorite drills though is a band resisted lumbar expansion drill. We need to use a pretty heavy band here. We have about a medium band. It's probably, I don't know how many pounds it is. It's a decent amount. It's, we need a band that's going to force you to work. The setup for this is putting bands around the hands, almost like if you're going to do a banded push up. From there, the band's going to be anchored onto your lower back and we wanna put as much tension through the hands in the lower back as possible. This is the position that we refer to as the Sphinx position. I think that might've came from yoga. But the purpose of the band is to try to bias you into an anterior pelvic tilt. Now to get out of that, we're not just going to round our spine. What I want Cassie to do is use her bracing mechanics, breathe and actually expand into that band. And as she expands into the band, that's going to set her uh, lumbar position, it's going to set her pelvis position, and that's the exact thing we want when you're squatting. This is what controls your pelvis position. It's, it's one of the major things that controls your pelvis position, I should say, is your ability to inflate your lumbar spine, not just round it. This drill becomes very easy if you just round your back into it, but what we want is quality inflation. So kind of relax here, Cassie, into like a anterior tilt, and then let's get a close up here of that expansion and, and watch that uh, bracing happen. Good, Cassie. Good. So as you can see, as soon as she did that, we started to see a change at the pelvis and we started to see more rigidity become formed at the uh, lumbar spine and certainly at the obliques and in, uh, in, 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 in the abs. Uh, if we were doing this drill, we would probably do it prior to training, not during training. We would do this 
as preparation work for training, anywhere from three to five sets and probably anywhere from uh, three to five breaths and hold, hold the contraction as hard as possible as your preparation work. But as with all preparation work, uh, we really just want you to do it as long as it takes to see positive change. Because um, I, I can also cook that. Why? What are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> See, it's getting real. We're present for you. Oh, happy birthday. Yay! Oh my gosh. And you birthday. get your own box. Thank you. Yes. We bought a box for everybody else because I know you probably want to try them all. Yeah. So yours. Take a bite of And each. then we yeah. have others for everybody else. Oh. <laughs> happy birthday. Happy birthday, Cassie. Thanks.